Hey, we're right in the middle of hurricane season here on the Gulf Coast, and every year it gets me to thinking about emergency preparedness, especially when it comes to our off-grid solar systems. Most of the time we're fine. The sun charges our battery bank, and we're good to go. But when we get several cloudy days in a row, or solar just didn't produce it enough, we'll flip the house over to grid power for a while. That gives the batteries time to catch up without the house draining them all at the same time. But here's the real question. What happens if the grid isn't there as a backup? That's the reality for folks who are 100% off grid. The only option left is usually a generator. And honestly, in the middle of a big storm or hurricane, we'd be in that same situation. That's why I want to show you the EG4 charge burner. It's basically a battery charger and a line conditioner in one. In plain English, it lets you take power from your generator and safely push it into your solar batteries. Now, I've known about the charge burner for a while, but I never bought one, mainly because I don't have 240 volt generator. But it turns out that EG4 has a simple fix for that. From just $18, you can get an optional 120 volt power cord. And with that, I can use any of my smaller 120 volt generators to charge my batteries whenever the grid is down for an extended period of time. And this is important because my 6,000 XP inverters can technically accept 240 volt power, but it has to be really clean power, like what you'd get from the utility company on the grid. But most small generators don't put out power that clean. And if you hook them up directly to your inverter, you could do some serious damage. Senior Solar even says the number one cause of inverter failures is people connecting them to a dirty generator. The charge inverter fixes that problem, and it conditions the power that it sends straight to your batteries. And it's versatile. You can use it at the RV park for your RV. You can use it with a box door generator like I do. Or if you have an EV, you can plug it in the EV and charge your system up. So let's do a little demo and simulate a grid down situation where solar just isn't cutting it. Step one, we're gonna set our generator up a safe distance from the house. And I really wanna stress this, gas generators produce deadly carbon monoxide. And tragically, I've even had friends that have lost their lives from camping with. So please, never run one indoors, in a garage, or near open windows. Always use them outside in a wide open space. Since the stock cord isn't long enough to reach my batteries inside, I'm using a heavy duty extension cord. This one's 10 gauge for 10 AWG, and that's important because anything smaller can overheat and cause problems. A 10 gauge cord can safely carry up to 30 amps over a short run, which is exactly what we need. Now the generator I'm using is rated at 4,750 watts peak, and that's 3,750 watts continuous. The charge verter draws a max of about 28 amps at 120 volts, and that works out to about 3,350 watts. So well within the safe limit of this generator. Another thing I like is that the charge burner just doesn't slam the generator with a full load right away. It ramps it up gradually, which makes life easier on the generator. Plus, you can set it to start charging when your batteries hit a certain point, say 35% state of charge, and then stop automatically when they reach, say, 80% state of charge. It even comes with an RS-45 cord that connects directly into your battery so it can monitor the voltage and state of charge of your batteries and know exactly when to turn on or off. That's awesome. And if you've got a generator that's got a two-wire start function, the charge verter can handle that too. It comes with a wire and a plug to plug into your two-wire system, and it'll start the generator automatically when the batteries get low, and then shut it back down when they're full for a true off-grid setup. Now, that's a game changer. You'd be surprised how many folks during a blackout just wire their gas generator up straight into their inverter. Nine times out of ten, that ends up frying expensive electronics, sometimes the inverter itself, sometimes the appliances in the house. The charge burner takes that risk completely out of the equation. You can see in these clips how I hooked the charge burner GC up directly to a 48 volt battery and then also into my Victron bus bar where all six of my EG4 Life Power Force servo rack batteries are connected. In both setups, it charged the batteries quickly and safely using nothing more than a standard 120 volt generator. Now, if you do have a 240 volt generator, it'll charge even faster. I played around with the settings, and while I was able to charge up to 35 amps at 120 volts, instructions recommend staying below 28 amps. And that's a good idea, especially when running through an extension cord. That'll get hot. For us, the EG4 charge verter is our new go-to backup plan when the grid is down and the sun isn't giving us enough to keep up. And I'll tell you, after living through more than three weeks without power or air conditioning after a hurricane, in the middle of a Texas summer, I promised myself I'd never, ever put my family through that again. Our DIY solar system already keeps the lights on when the grid goes down, but now even in extended outage with no sun, the charge inverter means we can keep everything running with just a few hours of generator time each day. 
Like I always say here at Terra Hill Farm, we're living just two steps from off-grid. And with the EG4 charge inverter, we can push even closer, staying off-grid as long as we need to, with nothing more than a basic affordable generator. Hey, don't forget, use our discount code that you can find in the video description and save $50 when you purchase the EG4 charge burger. Man, that's free money, and it helps our channel. If you'd like to see how we've taken our entire farm off-grid for a fraction of what most people spend on a whole home solar system, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you along as we keep working to take two steps from off-grid all the way to zero. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.